is the Andre Segovia Show. Hey everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Andres and this is the Andres Segovia Show. This is where I get to talk about real estate, tech, and anything regarding life. But most of that happens on my podcast. So if you're not subscribed yet, by all means, please. Video description down below, you'll find a link to every single podcast directory you can find my show on. That's the meat of the show. It's every single Monday until I get tired. So check it out there, please. Until then, please enjoy this video where I want to talk to you about Silicon Valley building a Chinese style social credit system. What is that? And before I get into that, I want to tell you a couple of announcements. Um, first one's re in relation to some events coming up. For those of you living in Orange County and Los Angeles, if you're wanting an excuse to go to downtown LA or at least the LA Convention Center, now's your chance because mid-September, we got the big million dollar trade show and landlording conference. I don't like the name, but the point of this is that if you're in real estate, whether you own a home or are looking to buy in a property or also looking to see how you can monetize your current home and convert it into working capital to make it work for you, this is the place you want to go to because this is a place where they have a bunch of different seminars on how you can get started, on what things to watch out for, and what laws are changing in California that could affect your ability to capitalize on your investments. And also, most of all, is what crazy new laws are being proposed at Sacramento that could affect your current portfolio of property. So this is the place you want to be up to date on. And the best part of all, it's free. So this event and the other one, I'm going to leave links to the video, in the video description down below where you can go register. This is from the uh, Apartment Association of America and it's AOAUSA.com well, AOA where you can go check out information about how to register. But again, I'll leave the links in the video description down below. This is September 12th and just a couple of weeks after that is the Real Estate Imagine Expo. So this thing used to be called the California Association of Realtors. I'm a member of a few associations, this being one of them. And the California Association of Realtors, this is the big one. And it's also happening at the LA Convention Center. As it started on 24th and ending on September 26th. The only days that are free though, are September 25 and 26th. Even though this is catered specifically to, uh, to realtors, that doesn't mean non-realtors can't go. So you can go for a nominal fee, but if you're a, a, a member of the association, this event is free for you. And the best part about both of these events is the exhibit halls where you can get to mingle with and, uh, with different exhibitors, whether they're vendors, whether they're uh, other uh, partners in the same work that you do, that you'll be able to get to know a lot of other people, network, and best of all, some of them are doing contests, giveaways, giving you a reason to stick around so you can be around for those giveaways. So just then you know, that again, I'll leave a link to these events in the video description down below if you're interested in registering. I am not sponsored by any of them, but I will be at both of them. So you want to meet me? Come find me. I'll be at these two events. I haven't missed the landlord conference yet. I have to go again it's twice a year, but the real estate one, this is once a year and there's a bound to be about 10,000 people. So just letting you know, these are the big ones. All right, that's it for the announcements in, of events. In terms of the other announcement I wanna make, I will tell you at the conclusion of this video. Let's dive into this article from fastcompany.com about Silicon Valley building a Chinese style social credit system. If you're not familiar with that, I like the introduction of this, pair of this article because it summarizes that very thing. If you haven't heard about it, this is what it is. It's a technology enabled surveillance based nationwide program designed to nudge citizens towards better behavior. The ultimate goal is to allow the trustworthy to roam everywhere under heaven while making it hard for the discredited to take a single step according to the Chinese government. They're not making this up. This is true. In place since 2014, the social credit system is a work in progress that could evolve by next year into a single nationwide point system for all Chinese citizens, akin to the financial credit score. It aims to punish for transgressions that can include membership in or support for the Falun Gong or Tibetan or Tibetan Buddhism, failure to play... Oh my goodness, I'm tongue twisting now. Failure to pay debts, excessive video gaming, criticizing the government, late payments, failing to sweep the sidewalk in front of your store or house, smoking or playing loud music or on trains, jaywalking and other actions deemed illegal or unacceptable by the Chinese government. This is the kind of stuff you expect from totalitarian regimes like this socialist place in, in China. They don't just punish wrongdoing, but they also want to reward the good stuff. It's so they're looking to also award points for charitable donations or even taking one's own parents to the doctor. Now, what kind of punishments are we talking about? This includes bans on leaving the country, 
using public transportation, checking into hotels, hiring for high visibility jobs, or acceptance of children to private schools. It can even result in slower internet connection and social stigmatization in the form of registration on a public black list. It's crazy, but guess what? This type of thing could be coming here to the United States through the tech companies. So how can it happen here? Here are some elements that the article will go on to explain about how it's being treated. Insurance companies. The New York State Department of Financial Services announced earlier this year that life insurance companies can base premiums on what they find in your social media posts. So that Instagram pic showing you teasing a grizzly bear at Yellowstone with a martini in one hand and a bucket of cheese fries in the other and a cigarette in your mouth could cost you. On the other hand, a Facebook post showing you doing yoga might save you money. Insurance companies have to demonstrate that social media evidence points to risk and not be based on discrimination of any kind. They can't use social posts to alter premiums based on race disability, for example. So they can check your stuff and you can't stop them. Patreon scan, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it's already set up in the United States, Canada, Australia, and the United Kingdom. This is a place that checks for fake IDs when you go to bars. And when you scan, if it's fake or since you're scanning in, if you're responsible for uh, being a troublemaker at these places, you're basically blacklisted. And if you're blacklisted off somewhere in the United States, that means you could probably be blacklisted in all those bars that take Patreon scan and by extension, every one of those countries except Australia because they use a separate system. But let's get something a little more personal you might be using. What's about Uber and Airbnb? So thanks to the sharing economy, the options for travels have been extended far beyond taxis and hotels. Let's talk about Airbnb. Airbnb brought in March that it has now more than 6, 6 million listings in its system. That's why a ban from Airbnb can limit your travel options. Airbnb can disable your account for life for any reason it chooses and it reserves the right to not tell you the reason. The company's canned messages include the assertion that this Decision is irreversible and will affect any duplicated or future accounts. Please understand that we are not obligated to provide explanation for the action taken against your account. The ban can be based on something the host privately tells Airbnb about something they believe you did while staying at the property. Airbnb competitors have similar policies. What about Uber? Whenever you get out of the car after an Uber ride, the app invites you to rate the driver, right? What many passengers don't know is that the driver now also gets an invitation to rate you. Under a new policy announced in May of this year, if your average rating is significantly below average, Uber will ban you from service. Hey, but Andres, I don't use Uber or Airbnb. But do you use WhatsApp? I know some of you BlackBerry fans out there have been asking me, can I get WhatsApp to work on my BlackBerry? You're going to want to pay attention to this part. You can be banned from communication apps too. For example, you can be banned from uh, banned on WhatsApp if too many users block you. Well, that's pretty reasonable. You can also get banned for sending spam. Yeah, you should. Threatening messages. Trying to hack or reverse engineer the WhatsApp app or using the service with an unauthorized app. Whoopsie. WhatsApp is small potatoes in the United States, but I know from a lot of you. That's like not being able to access a phone in America if you can't use WhatsApp to communicate. So what's wrong with the social credit anyway? This is the conclusion of the article. Let's get through it. Nobody likes antisocial, violent, rude, unhealthy, reckless, selfish, or deadbeat behavior. What's wrong with using new technology to encourage everyone to behave? The most disturbing attribute of social credit system is not that it's invasive, but that it's extra legal. Crimes are punished outside of the legal system, which means no presumption of innocence, no legal representation, no judge, no jury, and often no appeal. In other words, the Me Too movement, I mean, it's an alternative legal system where the accused have fewer rights. Social credit systems are an end around or an end run around the pesky complications of the legal system. Unlike China's government policy, the social credit system emerging in the United States is enforced by private companies. If the public objects to how those laws are enforced, it can't elect new rulemakers. 
An increasing number of societal privileges related to transportation, accommodations, communications, and the rates we pay for services like insurances are either controlled by technology companies or affected by how we use the technology services. And Silicon, Silicon Valley's rules for being allowed to use their services are getting stricter. It currently, if current holds trends, it's possible that the future of a majority of misdemeanors and even some felonies will be punished not by Washington, D.C., but by Silicon Valley. It's a slippery slope away from democracy and towards corporatocracy. I hope I said that right. Corporatocracy. In other words, in the future, law enforcement may be determined less by the Constitution and legal code and more by the end user license agreements. The things that you don't read, I sent to Pad. Yeah, you know, the reason I'm reading this is because, well, yeah, my channel's about technology. Uh, my channel's about services as well. And also because I'm on YouTube and, and I was happy to uh, be monetized as well. Um, the thing is that for those of you that are uh, regular YouTube uh, consumers, maybe you heard of a little thing that happened, a little uh, thing called the Vox Apocalypse. And that brought into question as to what role was YouTube playing in our First Amendment rights in, in the United States. For those of you outside the United States, this might be a little foreign to you if you're not familiar with the way it's set up with how we're able to conduct ourselves on, on YouTube. YouTube itself um, has the protections of, and also assumptions of what is called a town square. A town square is basically like the corner of your street, wherever you might be, and anyone and everyone can go over to those corners and say what's on their mind. So long as it's not infringing on someone else's rights, for the most part, you can't speak your mind. So long as you're not causing violence to other people. That is what YouTube is supposed to be like. But then there's something called the publishers. Publishers would be like the New York Times, for example, or television news channels. They control what they put out there because they're publishing the news. Well, YouTube wants to be able to do that or they're acting like it. That's why there's been a lot of channels that have been demonetized because there's a lot of speech that they don't agree with. They've been shutting them down. This is an extension of that. Whereas they're supposed to be free access for people. It's like you're using this stuff, their services supposedly for free, but you agree to basically give your soul to them because they have access to anything and everything you're putting up there. And now they're gonna judge you based on what you're putting up there. Facebook controls Instagram and WhatsApp because they own it. Look at how much control they have. It's scary to see the extent that they're able to go. Imagine they're able to block you from being able to advertise, from being able to publish, produce, or do anything anywhere, if your livelihood's on the internet and you can't monetize anything because you're banned from one place and that one place is a friend with the other place and they ban you from there too, you got nowhere to be. And guess what? This has actually happened. Now, I don't wanna mention what it is just by simple fact that some of you might be familiar with it and I don't wanna enter the political realm so to speak. But this is disturbing. I'm, I'm all for technology evolving. I am not for companies privately owned, mind you, telling us how to live our lives. That's a very slippery slope and it's a public debate that we have as to what, how we conduct ourselves. What is considered hate speech? What's considered assault? What's considered like covered, stuff that's covered under the First Amendment? You know, it's a very hot topic nowadays. So we'll see how all this stuff plays out. I don't like that direction that these uh, tech companies want to take. That's pretty scary, but uh, we'll see where all this stuff ends up. Um, and the only way we can ever fight back is by not using these services. But we can't stop these companies from doing what they're going to do. Just like Alexa and Cortana, you heard that? And also Google, they're all listening. So how do we get control of our stuff back? Well, we have to show them. We don't, they, we're not just their puppets. We're not their batteries to the matrix. Yeah, so that's scary stuff, which leads me to my announcements. So my announcement is actually two announcements also, but they're not events. My announcement number one is, uh, you probably heard me talk about off the record series. My off the record series is in the works. And for those of you that signed up for the limited run that I've been doing te some beta testing on, thank you so much. Um, you're most likely gonna be very well compensated in the form of a membership to be determined later. <laughs> Cause I don't know how I'm actually gonna do all that part yet. I'm excited because in the early stages off the record is an extension of the series that I do in the podcast where I can talk about anything and everything that I want 
without a concern for the censors because it does, it's not hosted on YouTube and it's not hosted on the podcast directories. It's an exclusive thing to those that sign up to my website, www.deandressegovia.com, and that's where it will live. But it's not open to everyone just yet. It's by invite only, and it's just rolling out very, very slowly as we're uh, in the background fixing some of the, the quirks and the tech stuff, you know, because there's a lot of stuff that happens in the background. So I just wanted to mention about that. But that's what's going on, and I can't wait to be able to make it more uh, widely available so I can get people on board with that. Now, next up is uh, if you heard me announce about my books, which I actually want to show you here on my site, that uh, I am an author. And if you haven't picked up my books, why haven't you? And if you know a book lover in your life, by all means, get him a romantic uh, comedy in the form of The Many Misadventures of Enoch Bellagio, book number one, Finding Love But Not Really, the second book, There and Back Again, Not a Hobbit's Tale, and the third book, the working title is The Search for The Purpose Driven Life. Now, that one was supposed to come out by now, but I had to delay it to winter because I've been busy with this entire rebranding project and relaunch of the Andres Segovia show. So I had to delay that book, but I have another announcement I want to make along those lines that I will be releasing the Andres Segovia show book. That one is the original transcripts of where my show came from and the humble roots of where I came from as an activist because I was a political activist and I covered a lot of different issues from, from 2003 to 2006 and all that was in the form of a newsletter which I compiled together into this book that has never seen the light of day and I'm excited to finally make it available. I, the artwork is in works and once I have that set, I'll be able to share with you and let you know when it goes up for pre-order because that one is coming early fall of this year. So. I published one book a year for the past two years. This year, I'm looking to publish two and relaunch my project, The Andres Segovia Show. It's really crazy. And it's just a lot of stuff that I do just because I enjoy doing it. And now I get to make it available to all of you. So thank you all for all your support. Thank you to my new subscribers. If you are wondering who the heck I am and why this is not a BlackBerry-based video, well, that's why I'm leaving at the end of this video um, a link to my question and answer video so you get to know more about me, where I come from, what I like, what I do. And also um, a link to my playlist of all my videos related to anything and everything BlackBerry because I recognize through the uh, analytics that is those of you that have given me the views that have given me the uh, the engagement and I appreciate every single one of you even though this is not a blackberry based channel at least not so not so much as it used to be when I dealt exclusively with tech but I do have a soft spot for blackberry I do use one today and I use services mostly across all my devices wherever I can and that's why it's um, with all this scary tech stuff that's why I'm like why blackberry why that's why I need you the most but my business unfortunately is literally hooked up to all that so it's hard to disconnect. It sucks. But at least I know I'm navigating tough waters. And if I have BlackBerry on my side with uh, an Android, hey, at least I'm, I would trust that more so than a Samsung Android or an Apple iOS product. All right, guys. That does it for this video. By all means, please check out the uh, www.theundersegovia.com. You can check out my other content and where else I've appeared. I made appearances on the Crackberry podcast. I've been interviewed on Real Estate Uncensored regarding tech for real estate and what that and that video aged very well, very very well. And I want to do a series. It's about it's going to be a three or four part uh, series that I'm going to do about my daily drivers. I used to do just like one big video, but I want to show you how to use how I use my tech. So I want to do smartphones, smartwares and my tablet slash PC. So I don't know if I'm going to break that up into two videos, which is why it's four or just three. So I'll figure it out as I go along. So I'll share that with you as that unfolds. All right, guys, that's it for this video. By all means, please like, share, and subscribe, stay in the know, and I'll see you on the next video.